All right, guys, now we're ready to start training the model. So the way I've kind of set this up is you should be able to just download the GitHub repo and it will have all the demo data in there for you. So that's what we're going to be running here. Um, if you'd like to collect your own data, then you can put that in the images directory. Now you have to remember here that the images directory needs to be spelled images. It's looking for images and it's looking for annotated. You can't call it something else. All right. Um, but after that, uh, you can go into the logs directory here. And if you'd like to make predictions uh, for the tensor board, if you want to see the progress of certain images as the network trains, you want to see what those masks look like, you can take those images and copy them and paste them into the logs directory. Um, and then this images directory is just kind of a, you might not even have this actually when you start training. It will, it'll kind of be created by default by the TensorBoard callback. So, um, but what happens is it'll, TensorBoard will look for these images and if it sees anything, then uh, it'll construct those masks internally within images, all right? And then it'll access those images and then just display them on TensorBoard, all right? So now that that's kind of gone over, uh, let's take a look at the actual code here. The only thing you should really change is the stuff in config.py. So if you want to use grayscale images instead of RGB, you can change M shape from three to one. I'd imagine most people would use RGB images. Uh, when it comes to the width and the height, I mean, I kind of talked about this before, but they should be evenly divisible by 32 if you want to use FCN8. I'd imagine most of you probably want to use UNet because the segmentation is very fine and that's great. So um, yeah, but, but try out different input shapes. And I did put an assert statement down here. If it's not divisible by 32, I have it like throw you an error and you won't be able to progress. So like, for example, if you wanted to run test.py, like I showed before, you want to practice like compiling a model, but not really train it just to see if the input shape will work with it. Um, you can do that. You would just uncomment these two lines, okay? and try it out, try out different Im image shapes, um, see if the model will compile and you'll be able to actually train on it. Uh, the mode, if you're doing binary, then said binary, I imagine most of you are probably trying to do multi, but um, set that to multi. And when it comes to model name, the model name should either have unit in it or it should explicitly have FCN underscore eight. There needs to be that underscore between FCN and eight um, or else, and it's just because it makes training the models a little bit easier here when I when I load them in. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll be training UNet here for this example, so we'll just call it UNet Multi. Um, logs, log directory is going to be logs for TensorBoard unless you want to change that. You've got the Hughes Dictionary, so this is where I show in the HSV video. If you guys didn't watch that and you don't know what Hughes saturation value is, you might want to go check that out, but this is how you would actually change the color of the masks for, for each of the individual annotations. All right. And I think that is it. So let's go over to train.py. Um, the other thing I've talked about this before that if you collect images where all you have is like the whole image is a background. So you don't create an annotation file for it. Okay. You leave that annotation blank. So what we do here, is we check if the length of images does not equal the length of um, files within annotated, we would generate those missing JSON files and that will actually build custom backgrounds for you and generate a, a JSON file that you'll be able to use, all right? Um, and that just checks every single time. So if you, if you kind of mix up the labeling for one of your uh, image, annotation pairs, then that could really be a big problem when it comes to filling in those empty background issues. So that, that could be a place where your annotations messed up, but you should check from the previous videos that the masks are actually getting built properly. If you watch the programming videos, um, but those Jupyter notebooks are actually included within the semantic shapes repo. So you can check that out. Um, the only other thing to kind of talk about here, you can chain change model base. So base for models is essentially figuring out how many filters you want. Cause realistically you don't have to use all of the filters 
or the same dimensionality that VGG16 uses for something like uh, FCN8 here, right? Like you could just start it with a base of three. So the filters will just increment by powers of two. Um, and this way you can kind of control and get like uh, some reasonable, I guess, parameter sizes so that you don't have like a massive network. And it's eventually the network could become so big that it can't stream in real time and that's not very fun. So um, I set the base to four for both of these by default, but you can make these smaller, you can make them larger. It's just an easy way to kind of change that. And I guess the only other thing that I'll talk about is the data generator because the data generator is really, 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 really long. But the general idea here is that we're going to be doing, uh, again, some image augmentation on our image if we choose to kind of flag that in the training. And the data generator will be able to generate entire batches of data on the fly um, by taking some image paths and the annotation paths. So the way this actually works, if you go all the way to the bottom here, there's a data generation method. And this is what actually builds out an entire batch of data. So you can see it builds up X, it builds up your input, your target matrix, and it kind of just goes based on a couple of things like are we augmenting, is this grayscale, is it RGB, and then it builds that and it'll return a single batch of data from the data generator. And that's actually what happens when training occurs. So the batch size for a training generator is five here. And if you wanted to make a validation split, you would just come in here and you call it like VG equals data generator. And you just make one for, uh, you could split your image path or you could split your annotation path if you want to do something like that. So let's actually try training here. So if I go over to my command prompt, uh, you would just run python train.py. And all this should come. So we're training UNet, right? It's going to show you the model. You can check that out. Check the dimensions. This is only 1.9 million parameters. So that's actually pretty small compared to FCN8. And yeah, it's just going to keep training. Um, you can go over to a second uh, command prompt and then you can launch TensorBoard. So the command for TensorBoard is you just go into the same directory where semantic shapes is. Make sure you have this activated. You're in the right working directory. I mean, working environment. And then you can say TensorBoard hyphen hyphen logder and you'll point to logs. So, and you should run this after you've started the training because every single time the training starts, it's going to clear out that logs directory, just so you're aware. And what you should see is that um, TensorBoard is now going to be open on port 6006 of localhost. So, if I go over here, I type in like localhost 6006, you can start to see the graph already coming in here. So if you go to TensorBoard, you can put a period and that will show you all the graphs. Um, you've got loss, dice, and this will look more interesting as it kind of keeps training. You've got the graph. So if you head over there, that's the graph of unit. And if you want to watch the, and these are, this is the prediction of the masks. Okay. So if you want to watch the masks, how they're being constructed as the model's training, um, you just head over to the images tab, and then this will keep updating. If you ever want to update, you just click this little arrow and there you go. So that's it. Um, and it should be training and I'm actually going to stop this and then I'll come back once the model has finished training. Okay. All right, so typically I would actually let the model train for something like 300 or 500 epochs um, if you're using the data augmenter. Uh, the benefit, obviously, the benefit of using the data augmentation is that it'll introduce blur. It'll really inflate your data size. So when you go to stream, the results actually are much better than what we do if you, if you didn't have the data augmentation on. So I'd recommend using it. And I would typically probably do like 300 or 400 epochs. Now I did want to, I want to kind of look at it now before it goes any further, because as you keep training the like resolution on these steps for the slider goes like really it's, it's kind of fixed. So 
I want to be able to really show you guys what these individual uh, training masks look like as the model progresses. So I think this is like the coolest part about semantic segmentation and having the tensor board working is that you can view these masks. So in the beginning, you're just learning. Um, and sometimes with FCN8, you actually don't even see these edges this early. But um, here, it, it learns the edges really quickly. It hasn't really figured out which side to start doing the classification. But as you go a little bit further, you can see it's starting to find the actual objects. And then it's kind of figuring everything out. And eventually, every time it updates, it'll skip forward there. But eventually, you can see all the different colors being kind of, uh, I guess, projected within these really tiny. Because, I mean, imagine you're using a, a 2 by 2 uh, kernel here. So the resolution of the semantic segmentation is much better than FCN8 because that uses an 8 by 8 kernel when it does the upsampling. So you get really, really fine grain. Uh, semantic segmentation here, which is great. And so eventually you'll start to see it kind of converge. And at this point, you know, all this stuff like this will get cleaned up as we start to uh, train longer and longer. So yeah, I would just let it train longer. Um, I usually go for like 500 and then the results start to look pretty good. And uh, the model should get stored in the models directory. So you can see here, um, it's just a dot model file that you can load with Keras later. So after that finishes training, you can try streaming the images and that's what we'll be talking about next.